Hello everyone, welcome to another lossless scaling video. I hope you're not bored, because lossless scaling just got a new update, or about to get a new update, and it adds one of the most requested features by the community, and that is adaptive frame generation, and also better performance under harsh conditions, like when your base frame rate isn't capped or your GPU is already running at near full load. Basically, with this update, not only are there more options for the frame generation features, lossless scaling is also becoming more foolproof and accessible to use. Previously, new users often ran into issues that stem from not knowing how or not wanting to cap their frame rate and also not having enough GPU headroom. With this update, common issues from those scenarios should be reduced or even completely resolved. One quick note, this review is based on a preview build, so the results shown in this video might not be 100% representative of the final public release build. And here is also the universal settings that is applied for all the tests that will be involved in this video. Huge thanks to the developer of Lossless Scaling THS for providing early access. Now, let's dive into the review. Okay, so this is the elephant in the room, the biggest addition in this update, Adaptive Frame Generation. In the previous version, now labeled as Fixed Frame Generation in the UI, frame generation relied entirely on your game's base frame rate. For example, if you were getting 30 FPS and used frame generation times 2, you would end up with 60 FPS. But if your frame rate dropped to 25 FPS, then the generated frame rate would also drop to 50 FPS. On top of that, frame generation was also locked to integer or whole number multipliers from times 2 all the way to times 20. So if you wanted to target a specific refresh rate, like for example 144Hz, you had to cap your game to a specific value such as 72FPS and then use frame generation times 2. The problem? Not only some people either don't know or don't want to cap their FPS, some modern games are still capped to a value like 60FPS, for example Elden Ring. I know there is an FPS unlocker, but still, by default. Your only options in these games were times 2 FG to 120 FPS, which is still below 144Hz, or times 3 FG to 180 FPS, which is above 144Hz. There is no in-between. Now, with the new adaptive mode, you can input whatever frame rate you want to target, regardless of your game's FPS. So even if your base frame rate fluctuates, the frame generation will try to generate more frames to stay at your target FPS. It also works well in smoothing out scenarios like random small dip and stutters. You might also notice that there is this new option called Q Target in the UI. I will explain quickly what value you should use in this new option. The value goes from 0, 1 to 2, and each is suitable for different scenarios. 0 is best used when you are chasing for the lowest latency, but is only suitable with capped FPS and good GPU headroom. This is my choice for fixed mode because I usually cap the game in the cinematic range of 30 to 40 FPS, leaving me with big GPU headroom. 1 is the balance between latency and frame generation performance. This, in the word of the dev himself, is the safe, new, user-friendly, leave-it-out-of-the-box option. 2 is for using lossless scaling with harsh conditions, such as unstable, uncapped base FPS and high GPU load. So set the value depending on your need. And yes, this means that targeting a frame rate that results in fractional frame generation is possible. Want to jump from 60 FPS to 144 FPS? Go for it. Running at 100 FPS and want to hit 165 FPS? No problem. The FPS are not cinematic enough for you, and you want to hit that magical 30 FPS. 
sure thing. This is something the community has been requesting for a long time. Well, maybe not the last one. And the capabilities is finally in our hand. Okay, so I want to start this review with some of the limitations of this new mode. Adaptive frame generation with its ability to use fractional multipliers is designed to improve the frame generation experience not to lower performance cost, at least for now. I know this might be a bit disappointing for some users, especially those that are hoping Fractional FG could become a solution to lighten frame generation load. I mean, it makes sense to think 1.5 times FG would be lighter than 2 times FG. After all, 2 times, 3 times, and 4 times FG have always been linearly more demanding to run as the multiplier increases. So naturally, a smaller multiplier should cost less, right? Well, not exactly. With fractional multipliers, the frame pacing algorithm relies on displaying and producing more generated frames rather than real frames to hit the target FPS. Meanwhile, integer multipliers like the classic times 2 or times 3 would prioritize displaying real frames more frequently than their fractional counterparts. So even with multipliers like 1.5 times or 1.8 times, the performance cost will be about the same as 2 times FG in fixed mode, as you can see from this comparison. Then why does fractional FG below times 2 even exist? Well, it's designed to help lossless scaling target any FPS without you needing to cap your base frame rate. Uncapped FPS by nature would fluctuate. By having the ability to do below times 2 frame generation, it can dynamically drop below times 2 multiplier in order to stay in the FPS that you are currently targeting. Because of the performance costs, I also wouldn't recommend intentionally targeting FPS that will end up using adaptive FG below times 2 constantly, especially with lower base frame rate where the multipliers would be equal to a low amount of frame to generate. For example, 40 FPS capped, then targeting 60 FPS, which is 1.5 times. That is only 20 more frames to render natively. And as you can see from this comparison of native 60 fps versus 1.5 times frame generation, the cost of frame gen outweighed the cost of rendering 60 fps natively. So native 60 fps in this scenario would be much preferred. So rather than capping at 40 and targeting to 60, it is much better to just use times 2 fix to 80, as the cost would be more or less the same or target FPS that is above times 2 so the frame generation costs are more justifiable. And if we are comparing Apple to Apple, fixed mode versus adaptive mode, at the exact same frame generated FPS and base FPS, the quality would be better on fixed mode as it shows more real frames compared to adaptive. But again, this isn't the strength or even the purpose of this new mode. It's like bringing an SUV to a drag race. This new mode's strength isn't in delivering raw performance or pure increase in quality. It's in ease of use. 
You can target any FPS you want, adapt to fluctuating and uncapped frame rate, and it works well even on the high GPU load, which we will dive into in the next section. Alright, so we have talked about the limitations of the new mode where it might fall short or scenarios where it's less desirable than the old fixed mode. Now we'll talk about where it shines. <laughs> yeah, boy. That is ease of use. In the past, using LSFG meant following these steps. First, cap your frame rate, either with RTSS, the driver, or in game settings. Second, boot up lots of scaling and set it up for LSFG. Third, launch a game. Then, check if you have enough GPU headroom to run frame generation using tools like Afterburner plus RTSS or a built-in overlay. After that, apply lots of scaling frame generation. If it works, great, but if you are near max GPU load or your frames start dropping after applying it, you would have to go back to step 1 or step 2 to find out a capped FPS value that is more stable or tinker again with LSFG settings and repeat the process. And now all you have to do is just boot up to your lossal scaling and then think about what FPS do you want to see today. For example, I wanted to see 120 FPS and then set the other settings according to your use case. For example, I wanted to reduce my resolution scale to 90. And by the way, if you notice, resolution scale is also renamed to flow scale in this new version, and it also got an update to its tooltips because it's one of those settings that people were asking around a lot. So now the updated tooltips explain it better. And after you're done, boot up your game and apply LSFG. And next is the ability to work in unstable FPS and high GPU load. Previously, in such case, the frame generation would be very inconsistent and unstable. With Adaptive FG, it's 180 degrees better compared to previous version as the Adaptive mode would keep it stable in the FPS you are targeting at. Just take a look at this uncapped and high GPU load run comparison between Adaptive and Fixed mode. In conclusion, Adaptive FG, another great addition to the software that I think would make lossless scaling much much more accessible to a broader audience. And it's done in such a short span of time, like the last major update was around a month or two months ago. Keep in mind this software is developed by one person at the helm, yet it took him less time to make these updates than my ass to make YouTube videos. Anyway, here is a few showcases of adaptive frame generation running uncapped in whatever games I have installed in my system. I hope it's enough for a preview pick. Enjoy! ロードの兵具が的を射ぬく。
目にも止まらぬ早業だ。And that is it for this preview early peek video to an upcoming lossless scaling feature. Thank you again to THS and the community for giving me early chance to review this. I cannot wait for you guys to be able to use it yourself as I've been enjoying it a lot in my spare time. Again, do not forget to join the discussions in the lossless scaling discord community or the steam community hub. And also thank you so much everyone for showing immense support for the last two videos as our channel have now reached 1.6k subscribers. I hope you'll stick around, keep enjoying the videos, I'll be seeing you guys again soon. Take care everyone.